On today's show, as the SEC and the DOJ investigate Nikola following the Hindenburg Research Posts, the company responsible for getting Nikola onto the stock market says it did due diligence. Ford teases us with footage of the prototype F-150 electric pickup undergoing testing and says it will be the most powerful F-150 ever. And rumours suggest that Croatian firm Rimac may be about to buy French brand Bugatti from Volkswagen. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you and yours are safe. If I look a little sullen, it's because we've just heard the sad news of the passing of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the US. So, As we covered on the show last week, things have gotten quite interesting of late for electric truck startup Nikola Corporation, thanks in part to a damning report from short seller and forensic financial specialists Hindenburg Research. This week, things got even more crazy, as Nikola admitted that footage of its Nikola One in motion wasn't footage of a powered vehicle, but rather a glider rolling down a hill, and it suffered a pretty substantial market drop as a consequence. I don't have the time to go into all of the developments here, but early on Friday, a board member for Nikola Corp, who was the head of Vector IQ, the special acquisition company which helped Nikola get into the stock market via a reverse merger, says that he's comfortable with the due diligence carried out before the merger. He told the Financial Times webcast, quote, I've driven on electricity, I've driven on hydrogen, and I think they're awesome trucks, end quote. This one is likely to go on for a while, so we'll keep you posted with further developments. Having just survived some truly horrific and dangerous air quality, thanks to the fires raging along the US's west coast, air quality isn't far from my mind and I bet it isn't far from many of yours too. This week, Volvo highlighted a technology that's been available in its 90 and 60 series vehicles since the spring, an onboard synthetic fiber-based air filter and ionization system for the cabin, as well as an in-cabin air quality sensor. Driven initially by poor air quality outside in countries like China, this technology is Volvo's answer to Tesla's bioweapon defense mode. But rather than just filter the air, it can also display real-time air quality data on the car's center console. Volvo says you can even use your car's companion smartphone app to turn on a deep air cleaning prior to getting inside. As Ford starts production of its new 2021 next generation F-150 pickup truck, it also teased some new footage and details about its upcoming electric variant. Due in 2022, we now know that the electric F-150 will feature dual electric motors, have the same over-the-air dual slot update system as the Ford Mustang Mark E, offer the best performance of any Ford F-150 available today, and come with an impressive acceleration and heavy towing capabilities. With no large engine up front, Ford also confirmed the electric F-150 will feature a large front trunk, a first for a Ford pickup, of course, and will be built as a workhorse, not a show horse. Ford also says the F-150 will come with onboard power generation, read inverter, that will make it possible to power tools from the truck. As someone who lives in a rural area and has a partner who likes to woodwork, I'm very interested in trying one myself. Mercedes-Benz has been building and selling all electric buses for some time, with its e Citaro electric buses now operating on various routes around Europe. This week, though, we got a surprise, namely that Mercedes-Benz has launched a brand new articulated version of the Citaro with two battery options, a next generation super fast charging nickel manganese cobalt battery with a total theoretical battery capacity of 396 kilowatt hours, batteries which, by the way, can be swapped into existing e Citaros or a brand new cobalt-free solid-state battery pack packaging 441 kilowatt hours on board. This makes Mercedes-Benz the first company in the world to bring solid-state batteries to market. Deliveries are due to start immediately with fleet operators in Europe. Electrify America has officially announced its switch from charging per minute to charging per kilowatt hour into 23 US states where it's allowed to do so. 
rather than use the tiered system, which will remain in parts of the US where charging per kilowatt hour is prohibited by law, Electrify America will charge upwards of 31 cents per kilowatt hour, depending if you are an Electrify America member or not. Regardless of how full your car is or how fast it can charge, you'll pay that same rate. While this will make charging more affordable for some, it will have the opposite effect for others, and it could lead to people camping out at quick charging stations until their vehicles are fully charged, as people won't be incentivized to move on when the charge rate slows. In states where charging per minute has to remain, there will now be just two tiers instead of the four that previously existed. Electric bus company Proterra, which has been at the forefront of electric buses for many years, has announced its brand new ZX5 electric bus. The fifth generation electric bus to debut from the company, Proterra will offer a choice of two variants, a 35-foot bus and a 40-foot bus. The smaller will have up to 440 kilowatt hours of onboard batteries for up to 240 miles of in-service range, while the larger 40-foot bus will offer up to 660 kilowatt hours for 329 miles of range per charge and service. That's not only enough for an eight-hour urban service route, but it now means that the bus should be more than happy in many larger metropolitan suburbs and maybe some rural areas too. The buses are lower and more streamlined than their predecessors with improvements for both driver and passengers to boot. Earlier this year, we told you about a brand new vehicle-to-grid pilot project being planned for Fiat's Mia Friori production facility in Torino, Italy. The factory, where the all-new electric Fiat 500 has made, has just finished construction and received its official unveiling this week. A collaborative project between energy storage specialists Energy and Fiat Chrysler, the project, featuring 12,000 solar panels capable of generating 6.5 megawatt hours of electricity per year, has 32 vehicle-to-grid charging pedestals, each capable of connecting to two vehicles. Eventually, the project will expand to include enough vehicle-to-grid connections to accommodate up to 700 cars at once, which would make it the largest V2G project in the world. Whenever a new car comes to market, traditional auto dealers who wish to sell that car on behalf of automakers must decide if they're going to invest in the mandated sales and service training, not to mention purchase the service equipment needed to work on the vehicles in order to be allowed to sell said vehicles. How much it costs depends on the car and required service equipment, but this week we learned that Cadillac may ask its high volume dealerships to pay upwards of $200,000 each to go through the necessary training and upgrades to their service equipment before they can sell and service the 2022 Cadillac Lyric EV. That's a hefty sum to pony up to sell Cadillac's first electric car, and it's feared by outlets like Automotive News that many dealers will just skip the Lyric and continue selling the internal combustion engine Cadillacs. If I was to suggest that a startup electric company was reportedly in talks to buy a prestigious legacy brand like Bugatti, one that's been around for more than a hundred years, you might think I'm joking. Yet that's apparently what's going on right now with Croatian electric hypercar specialist Rimac. It's rumored to have completed talks with Volkswagen about buying Bugatti. It seems bizarre at first. After all, Bugatti hasn't exactly been known for its clean green vehicles. Yet the French brand, known for making and selling cars with terrible fuel efficiency and seven-figure price tags, could be a great way for Rimac to embed itself into the automotive industry elite. And it could also help Volkswagen shred a brand that's really not doing much for it anymore, and certainly not for its image. It would also ensure Bugatti goes electric. Now that's something I would be interested to see. Scotland is a really, truly beautiful place. And frankly, if it had decided to leave the UK, I'd probably be living there right now rather than the US. But to explain that would require politics, so I'm going to stop there. Anyway, Scotland, while part of the UK, has a fair amount of autonomy from Westminster, and this week demonstrated that in an amazing way by launching a new interest-free loan scheme designed to help its citizens dump the pump and go electric. The new scheme will offer up to £35,000 
to buy a new electric vehicle or £10,000 to cover the cost of a new electric motorcycle or moped. Applicants will have up to six years to repay their interest-free loans to Transport Scotland. And we're promised more information very soon, so watch this space. And finally, particulate pollution is a big problem around the world. And while most people think of tailpipes as being the primary source of pollution, the tyres on our cars, regardless of what they're fuelled by, also produce an insane amount of microparticulates that can affect air quality. What's more, tyre particulates are expected to increase over the next 10 years, or while tailpipe pollution dramatically drops which is where the Tyre Collective comes in, a team of engineers and scientists from Imperial College London and the Royal College of Art. They've just won the James Dyson Award in the UK for designing a special electrostatic device that captures up to 60% of all airborne tyre particles, since the tiny tyre particles from your car tyres are electrically charged when they fly off the wheel. Given that electric vehicles can be responsible for more tyre particulates, due to their heavier weight and larger torque. I am really keen to see how this project progresses into engineering prototypes. So watch this space. And on that note, we are done for today. Make sure that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you do have your browser open, if you're sat at a computer, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch and you're going to be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be making more content for you to enjoy next week, but until then, please remember to stay safe, wash your hands and keep yourself healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.